It's a God thing. Come on, it's a. It's a God thing. It's a, it's a, it's a God thing. Let the whole world know Jesus is me. Welcome to another episode of It's a God Thing, when we are making Jesus famous by sharing amazing testimonies of the power of God, transform lives and people who have encountered Jesus. On today's show, I have to say, I have my dear friend, Deborah, Deborah mm -hmm. Rivera. I have been waiting for two years to interview this lady, mm -hmm. and she's got an amazing, amazing testimony. So we're gonna have to try to compact this amazing story and testimony that you have mm -hmm. in like 20 minutes here. Okay, so Deborah, you were married mm -hmm. and you were a product of domestic violence. Yes, and take us to that one night where it totally changed your life. That was in 2016. I was stabbed by my dear husband 18 times mm. with a curved knife, uh, ending dead for five hours. And I have documents that prove. Did you hear that? She was dead for five hours. Can I have those papers? Yes, ma'am. So before the interview, we talked a little bit. I was like, Deborah, do you have like documents and stuff to kind of prove? I believe it. And I know because I've heard thousands of testimonies of people in the power of God. But just for those of you that might be like, what? I don't know. Real documents, original documents that she, in fact, was dead for five hours. So mm. continue, I had to do that little little side note there. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was a shock for me. I was raised in a Pentecostal house. My grandfather was the one that brought the church in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. So I was raised in that background. Right. But my change life progresses since I was like nine, 10 years old, I was, at the school, the peer pressure, mm -hmm. I began to change drastically and um, I was rebellious mm. completely. And when my grandfather died, that got me worse. Mm -hmm. So my life turned all around mm. uh, to the point that I started saying that that God thing was not true. Mm. But the Bible talks about when you preach to a kid and you show them, lead them, mm -hmm. That path, Teach them in the way they should go. It will never go away and from them. They will not depart from and it. And that is Amen. true. Amen. This day, my husband, my ex-husband, uh, this was not the first time that we had a fight. or It was like the sixth time, and I had put um, protection orders, and I just took them away. Well, I'm going to change. I promise you I'm going to change. I'm not doing it again. I will go to church with you. We're going to be happy. But no, it didn't happen that way. It was seven o'clock in the morning mm. when this started to the point that eight, eight forty-five, I went to my daughter. Nobody knew about me. The day was very long for me, very stressful. And when I got to my daughter, she looked at me. I never wear a lot of makeup, but that day my face was all bruised. And she looked at me, we're in Nana's house, my mother's house. And I knew if my mother see me, mm. Right. She was going to ask questions. I didn't want her to be hurt no more because she told me many times, you need to stop, you need to get away, and I never listened. Mm -hmm. I so know. that was that same night you have gotten a beating, you saw your daughter, yeah. and then? My daughter, when we got out from my nana's house, my mother's house, she said, Ma, stay with me. Mm. Don't go. Don't go. I said, no, Mommy, I, have I was working by that time as a nurse in a place called Bayamon. I said, no, I got to go home. I got to do what I didn't do today. I have to do it for tomorrow. She looked at me with tears on her mm. eyes. She said, Mommy, please stay with me. And I looked at her and said, Mama, my baby was my new, born new baby, grandson. Mm. Says, if the baby cries, I'm going to get up. I will not rest. I need to rest. I need to be ready for tomorrow. She looked at me again with tears on her eyes. She said, Mommy, mm. please don't go. I have a feeling something's going to happen to you. Stay with me. Mm. And I said, no, Mommy. I said, Deb, don't worry. I'll be fine. 
I promise you I'll get home and I will call you as soon as I get home. She looked at me again and she started crying. She said, Mommy, please don't go. I have the feeling something's going to happen to you. Please don't go. And I looked at her again. I said, I'll be okay. I promise you I'll be okay. She gave me a kiss and a hug. And she said, please, do you have 15 minutes? Because we were very close to get to the house, park, get home, call me right away. Mm -hmm. I said, I promise you I'll do that. That never happened. Mm. I got home, the light was gone all over the places. My apartment was the last one going up to the roof. And I said, oh my Lord, this is dark. Never mm. seen it that way and I got scared. But I didn't stop because I had to go up there and call my daughter. I was fighting with the door to get in because you couldn't see nothing. And I kept on fighting to get that lock. I need to open the door, get in. And all of a sudden, I fur on my back, I felt something real hard, mm. sharp. And I just took a deep breath and keep on fighting, looking for the door to open. And it kept on, it kept on. And then when I turned around, he was there. He cut me on the forehead, mm. my ear, my arm my forearm, my breast, my back, and the last one was from here to here. Everything came out. Mm. I dropped on the floor and he kicked me. He said, I told you we're not getting out of here. That point, my neighbor came to the house because she noticed the light came on. So she came to turn on the lights. She knew that was my apartment back there and it was very dark. Mm -hmm. So when she came up the stairs, it was 18 steps to go up to my apartment, she saw me on the floor. I used to play with the kids. Right. Were you, did you pass out at that moment? Oh, I screamed you... like you didn't have an idea. I okay, mean, so you were, uh, you were yes, aware. Yes, I was so fighting you... to get help. So you didn't die right away? No. Oh, I was Lord. fighting Mercy. to get help and screaming. I mean, screaming that I couldn't speak. You couldn't hear my voice. So did that he run point. away? Did he... When he noticed and heard the, uh, the bottom door pushing in, he jumped from my place down and then ran. Hmm. She came up. She saw me on the floor. She thought I was going to make a joke to the kids because I always used to play with the little kids. She said, Debbie, get up. It's dark and you're going to get hurt. I didn't so she didn't well. realize she didn't hurt. see she didn't notice anything wow so she ran to her apartment wow turned on the all the fuses and all the big lights on and when Thanks. she saw me she started cr screaming like crazy everybody from around came and i'm telling you when i screamed nobody nobody heard me that's crazy so her and her cousin pulled me hmm. my hands were stuck to my the keys were stuck to my hand she took them out Open the door and they try to drag me when they turn me around to get into my apartment. Oh, everything mm. was out. And you still conscious? And I was conscious. So CIC, I'm sure she calls, oh, they call, yeah. she calls 911, they come get they you. They came, CIC, the uh, paramedics, and all the policemen that were around, they right. came. So I know that you saw things when oh, you yes. find So take me to that moment where yes. you're in the hospital. They was were, it in the hospital? They were putting me down okay. to the and ambulance. And then you finally, you're out, you're to gone. To the ambulance, and one of the uh, paramedics noticed that my heartbeat was going down. And he told the other one, we got to move because she's not going to die here. She could die. I told them, I'm thirsty. Hmm. That's one of the signs when you're losing a lot of blood, uh, being a nurse, you know that. Mm -hmm. And he says, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. I'm listening to my daughter with a baby in the front of the ambulance and I'm trying oh, to see my baby. That was my baby. So he noticed that every time the baby cry, I will try. And he told her, keep on moving him, do something that right. she could hear it so she could react. But that but didn't no, help. That didn't, and then you that finally... didn't happen. Um, they stroked me twice. Mm -hmm. At the second time, my body was left. Hmm. I could not speak. I, I could not say a word. My mind just said, Lord, that's all. Hmm. Those hands, because I literally saw the hands, were brighter than the sun that lights every hmm. day. 
those hands lift me up. And I saw my body on the third shock. No response. I saw when they cover me. I saw my daughter screaming and crying and fighting. Why? Why her? She could not believe what was going on. From there on, those hands took me to a place. There's a book. The Bible talks about the book. Many people don't believe it is real. Mm -hmm. The book of life, it's there. And they took me one by one by one all my life since I was chosen on my mother's belly. All my life was there. Everything. A little lie, it's not a little lie. It's a lie. A little sin, it's not a little sin. It's still a sin. It's there. Everything is written right there. You cannot hide with five fingers. Wow. And I saw my life. And I saw my grandfather grabbing my hair and telling me, I wish you know how much God loves you. Mm. I wish you knew how much God loves you. From there, they took me to another place. Hmm. Remember, I refused to go back to church. I said, that's not a real God. That's not true. That's a... I was battling with my emotions, with people surrounding me, mm -hmm. with people from church. Right. Because when you look for help, they're going to see... Right. That it's a constant thing. Oh, you don't need that. Right. You keep on doing it. Yeah. That's when that thing comes to you. Right. Why do I need to go to church for? Nobody's right. going to help me. So you're in heaven. Were you in heaven when you saw those hands? Yes. Or? Yes. Mm. It's, it's amazing. I'm still looking for colors that are not here. Flowers that are not here. Mm. Aromas that are not here. I have a question I, for you. Yes. So I keep hearing about this grass from people that have had experiences. It's so. amazing. It's amazing. Um, many people think that because you die, you don't feel. Yes, you do. Mm. Especially when God has a purpose in your life, you feel everything. Mm. You do feel, so you see things, you smell things. You hear, I hold, I'm telling you, the music, it's nothing mm. compared to this, nothing. And believe me, I hear music, I hear classic music, I hear orchestras, and I'm trying. Nothing compares. Wow. That aroma, the special aroma, it's nothing. And I lit candles all over my house. Mm -hmm. There's nothing compared. It was there, um, this is so hard to transition. Um, did you go to, was there a message? Did you go yes. to, school? did you see angels? I did see angels. And believe me, they won't fit here. <laughs> they won't, because they're beautiful, and the wings are amazing. And when they bring their wings, it's like, oh my Lord, that breathe, it's peaceful. It's very peaceful. It gives you that inner peace that you're looking for, that you can't find nowhere. From that last moment, those hands took me to a place. I could see myself in and out. And I'm walking on glass. Mm. Many people say that it's not true. You go walk. The river. And for me it was special because when I hear that voice, it says, look. <laughs> look. That's what my people needs to do. Transparent. Mm. In and out. That's what I need from my people. And I remember my tears. And that voice told me, don't ask me why. Ask me what for. Mm. Wow. It was five hours during that process. So did you, um, I know we're running like short of time, but did you visit different places oh, in yes. heaven? Yes, what I was did. the most impactful and what was the message the that were given to you to bring to us? Because obviously I believe that the reason why you had this experience and God mm. spared you is because you have a message to bring to God's people. One of the biggest things I learned and I know, God created men and women to be together, 
to honor themselves, to respect themselves. When I went to the last place that I saw the doors, beautiful pearls, mm. doors all over me, surrounding me. And that was this tiny door. And that voice said, the only ones that will come into this door is the one that believes, mm. that will honor me, that will serve me no matter what. And I'm giving you a chance wow. to see that I am God, that I have not changed, that I'm that, the same God that was then, before, and will be. It's hard these days. Domestic violence is very tough because we go to church. We go to church. But like me, it was a cycle. Mm. I didn't have a way to get out. I, don't, I didn't know who to reach. And when I reached to someone specific in church, this person said, that's just a joke for you. You're used to it. You need to keep your mouth shut and keep on going. Wow. That's not true. The Lord gave me a chance to come and tell people there is a way. There is a love that will cover everything that will teach you and take you to that right path. You don't know the fear. You don't know the tears of anybody that has gone through what I did. It was not easy for me because I got upset. I wanted to do to him the same thing he did to me. And I will ask the court to look for him. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do the same thing he did to me, just the curved knife, just to see how he feel. Mm -hmm. and. God showed me to forgive. And I want to I want to touch on that because I mean I know you got like so many it's it's, it's, it's so strong, much trying yeah. to pack in a short time. But honestly like I feel that's the biggest miracle of all as well. Because we know that as believers unforgiveness <laughs> will keep us from going to that beautiful yes. place that you <laughs> just went. Yes. And the fact that you can say, I have totally forgiven this man. Mm -hmm. And you're here today to tell this story, this miracle, yes. to share that heaven is real, guys. Yes, like heaven is, is real. It there is. is a place Jesus left to save that he's going there to, to prepare a place for us. He's there, you know, and I'm sure heaven is so huge and you saw things, but I'm sure you didn't see everything. Oh, yeah. But your message is a message of forgiveness, a message of salvation. Not everyone can enter there. There is only one way. Yes. One way, and that is through Jesus Christ. And he loves us so much and it, it moves me because you said that you had walked away from the Lord and yes. you were in a state where you even felt like, I don't even know if God is real. And this is, the, uh, this is why we do this show, mm -hmm. to show people that God is real, is real. and that is He real. loves them, and that He's still working miracles today. And right now, you're being used tremendously. Amen. She's in the ministry. Mm -hmm. You are ministering to uh, battled women right. that are, are going through domestic violence, mm -hmm. right? It's tough because you deal with every emotion, and you come to these memories back in your shoes. But you know, God teaches you the word. He teaches you there's a way of everything. And there's a lot of things that many men and women, because I can't say only women are battered, um, don't know about the mm -hmm. Bible. Yeah. He talks about it. He talks about the love. He talks about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. For me, that was the worst thing, learning to forgive. Right. And one night, I went on my knees and I cried. I was angry. I was furious because I wanted to take everything out right. and just let it out. And the Lord said to me, when you learn to forgive, you will be healed. Wow, that's so good. And I sat on my bed and I started writing. I started writing the good and the bad. And every time I tried to write the bad, I couldn't write anything. Mm. Because you know what? God is a God of forgiveness. Amen. God is a God of love. No matter where you are, doesn't matter what you're going through. Amen. God loves you anyways. Amen. Doesn't matter who you are, what color you are, American, Spanish, African, whatever. 
He loves you the way you are. And it took me years to learn that. Wow. Today I'm here and I thank you for this Welcome. blessing. Thank you for coming. Just to let people know there's a chance. Mm -hmm. There's a chance to learn. There's hope. If you knock on a door and they don't open, keep on going to the next one. There is hope. Right. Right. There well, is hope for you. It doesn't I, matter where. I want to thank you for coming thank you. and sharing your story. And I know that, um, you know, backstage you've so beautiful, beautiful things. Yes. Hey, read the Bible. <laughs> it tells you a snippet, a little bit of what heaven is like. Yes. Um, right now you're helping women. Yes, um, can you share maybe your email or a place yes, where they can uh, um, get a hold able, of you? I will be able to give you my email. It's a Debbie Girl underscore 2003 at yahoo.com. I could give you my phone number. I will not answer right away, but leave a message. Mm -hmm. It's 407-552-5668. You can reach me any time of the day. I'll be happy to answer. I'll be happy to help. I'm here to help. I'm here to tell you that God is real. And he's giving you a chance. It doesn't matter where you are, how you're going through. We're here to teach you. There's a way. God loves you no matter what. Thank you again. Amen. I do have to ask you something really quickly. Um, you were already in the hospital, in a bag. Can you just tell me, like, whoever found bag, you? Yes, like the nurse, she's a tiny, skinny lady. Uh, she was coming with another dead body, and she banged into the bed that I was there. And I started moving inside the bag. The lady thought it was a rat or something, because in Puerto Rico, you have that everywhere. Mm. So she said, it's a curiosity. I said, no, God needs witness. Amen. God needs a witness right there. And she started walking towards the side of the bed, and I kept on moving inside. So she started little by little putting down the zipper and moved back. She came back because I kept on moving to the point where she pushed the zipper down, and I grabbed her <gasps> hand, and I said, take me out of here. <laughs> Oh my that gosh. lady almost pulled my hand out of socket. Oh okay? my gosh. But she started running from science, wow. forensic science to the hospital. Could you imagine? Set, screaming, That's... the dad is alive, the dad is alive. Uh. The doctor thought that she was going crazy. Wow. It's, well. it's, you know, that's amazing. Yeah. I definitely wanted to share that because mm -hmm. I'm sure it's hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's funny. And I mean, I, think about it. I mean, it's I don't amazing. even know what I would have done. I think I would have freaked out too. <laughs> I so, know she did. but thank you so much for coming. Thank you for coming to It's My a God pleasure. thing. Thank My you for pleasure. watching. God is real. I, this is like amazing, mm -hmm. amazing, and He loves you with an everlasting love. Amen. God bless.